What's up everyone, Little Code Ninja here. In our previous video, we talked all about event blocks, which are really cool. Now we're gonna talk about the most important blocks in Scratch, in my opinion, which are control blocks. Let's get started. So how about we drag a when green flag click so we can show our code. The first one is wait one second. So when you don't want stuff to all happen at the same time, right? Like we want to play the sound bass, but we also want to move our character, uh, how about 50 steps, right? But if we don't have a wait one second block, here's what's gonna happen. So now if we grab something like start sound, for example, I forgot I used play sound until done, which will actually wait. It does it at the same time. However, if we put a wait one second and change the value to something like two and we reset scratches x which is zero now it waits and then it moves which is really really handy in every way but we're gonna start getting to some even more handy stuff first of all is repeat right so if you want something to keep on moving then you can actually use this cool repeat command. Whoops, I shouldn't have set the size to something small. I meant to set the X to zero. Ha ha ha, silly me. Okay, so we're gonna repeat something like moving 10 steps. And uh, we're also, yeah, so let's do that. He'll move 10 steps. That's gonna repeat 10 times. So that all repeats really, really fast. So what we can do to make it a little le less fast is drag a wait one second after every every repeat. Now it has to wait one second before it repeats every time. So now we can actually see Scratch the Cat moving. Click the stop sign because I don't want to see this man walk at the pace of a snail. Okay, now let's keep going. You can also change the number of times he repeats just like with everything else in Scratch. Next we have a forever block. Forever blocks do what they say. They execute forever. But you can probably notice that unlike other blocks such as repeat, you in repeat you can put a block after it. But in forever, you can't put anything after it. Because if it's executing forever, then it will never finish. So the block after it will never get executed. So that's why if you're gonna do a forever block, then make sure that you choose your forever blocks wisely because they're not something to throw around. So we have a forever block, and what we can do is, for example, move 10 steps. That will just move him forever. We can stop, drag him here, and let's see what happens when we put in an if on edge bounce block. Now he's on the edge, so he bounces. So this will constantly move him forever, nonstop, which is pretty useful because uh, of our next thing, which is if then. What if then does is that it checks, okay? If something is true, then do this. So for example, right, for example, if, and we can go and we, I can show you my costume thing, remember we can grab costume and say costume name. And then we can say if costume name and what you use along with if is something called operators. We'll go over this in a separate video, but we can grab an equal sign and say if costume name equals and change it to costume one which is the name of this costume right now then we can say hello for two seconds so that's true so he'll say hello but if we do something rude like switch it to costume two this won't be true so it shouldn't say hello and as you can see, it doesn't say hello. But the problem with if thens is that they actually don't always check. They only check once. So when the green flag click, it will check once. And then if it's not there, it stops checking. So even if I change his costume now, right, it's not going to care. The if then block won't check that, which is why we can use forever. So that if we put it forever and an if then, it will check it all the time. So now we'll always check. And if we put this here, then he will stop saying hello. And if we put this here, because of the forever block, he'll never stop saying hello, right? So now we can see 
that that makes the if then update live, which is really, really useful. And it's a trick we'll be using a lot. Building on if then is a block called if then else. So what that does is let me just transfer all of this. So what if then else says is, hey, if this is true, do that. Or else, right, if this is not true, then we can say something like, oh, drats, right? Oh, drats, just like that. So right now it should say hello. Yes, it does. However, if we switch it to something that's not true and run it again, it will say, oh, drats, because it will say, hey, this isn't true, so or else we'll do this. Now, I don't want to confuse anyone, but you can do something called nested loops. So you can say, if this is true, then do this, excuse me, or else do this, but within the else, you can check a different if. This is called else if. So you'll say, if this is true, do this, or else, if this is true, do this, right? So we can say now that if the costume name is uh, costume two, then say cool, right? So that will do that. So now it won't, it will check this. If that's not true, it will check this. If that's not true, it won't do anything. So right now it's on costume two. So it will say cool. But if we switch it over to costume one, it will say hello. And the same thing if we switch it back to costume two, it will say cool. We can also drag another if then else within an if then else. So you can basically put as many of these inside each other as you want and do some really cool stuff. So if it's not costume one or costume two, well, technically that's not possible. So <laughs> that won't even happen. But the point remains that you can put loops within each other as much as you want. Next, we have wait until. Wait until will say, wait until something happens. So for example, when the green flag is clicked, wait until, so we can say hello. And you know that in order to change the text, you need to say something else. So we can wait until they switch to costume one and then say, what was up? Just like that, and we can go back to control. So if we click this, it's gonna wait until we switch to costume one. And now we'll say, what's up, right? So you can do this too, just like the forever block, the wait until could work, but I just prefer the forever block. However, the advantage to wait until is that you can do code underneath it, right? So you can do more code. It really is your choice and it depends on what's going on. Similarly to wait until, we can say repeat until. So for example, we could repeat some code until the costume is costume one. Make this costume two. So uh, we could play annoying sound. So I'm probably gonna, ch uh, um, probably gonna ruin your day. <laughs> so now we can constantly do that. Just like that, until we switch to costume one. Now, this is no longer true, so it won't keep repeating that, right? So now we can execute again, and it will keep repeating until that thing that we set in there is true, which it now is. So we can click stop. Now we can smash that away, because I really don't need any of that. And I actually think this is glitching, so let's put another green flag. There we go. Okay, we still have a few more things. We have stop all, which stops any code, right? So you have a bunch of crazy code, stop all just immediately stops the code. It's basically the stop sign button code. You can also stop the script that it's in, which means like if there's an if then, and right, and you can say like, uh, hey, if, um, if the, this is true, right? So if, for example, we can grab equals, and then we can say if, and then we can grab a uh, silly value, like what was that one I was using earlier? Let's see, like for example, we can go to sensing, which we'll talk about and say, hey, if the key space is pressed, I struggle there to make a, a condition, <laughs> but if the key space is pressed, then we want to stop this script. 
So what we're going to do is it's going to, oh, we need to make sure to put it forever so that it keeps going. So now uh, we should probably do something better. So like, for example, he can move 10 steps forever and constantly bounce if he's on the edge. There we go. So he's going to keep moving. But if we press the key space pressed, then it's going to stop the script. But it only stops whatever it's inside. So if we have something else going on, that's going to keep going, right? But if we click all, it stops everything, even in other sprites. It stops all code. And this option stops any code going on, but just for this sprite. So it's a stop sign, but only for Scratch the Cat. So if we have another sprite doing something else, they'll keep doing that. Next, we have clones. I don't want to touch on clones too much because they're pretty complicated, but you can create a clone of the same sprite without having to duplicate it. So now we click this button. We have a clone of Scratch the Cat. Click it again, right? And we have another clone, which is pretty neat. Now we can say when I start as a clone, then, right, then we can say hello for two seconds. So now, if we start, this clone will say, hello, and then we can delete the clone. This is basically a quick demonstration. Press the stop sign to delete all the clones. This is a quick demonstration of what you can do with clones. He'll say, hello, and then that clone will delete himself, and we'll still have the original over here. So there you go. That was a bit of a lengthy one, but what the key takeaway is, is how if-then and if-then-elses work and how you can do a nested if, where you grab if then, and you say, do that, or else, if this is true, do that. So you can keep doing that. Basically, you'll have a bunch of if else within each other, which can be really useful, surprisingly. Next, we're gonna talk about sensing, because that's really, really useful with if then, to do things like do stuff on the click of a button, and grab a bunch of information. So I can't wait to do that. See you then.